In October of 2004, a group of community volunteers from East Aurora, New York came together with their camcorders and spent some time videotaping the people, places, and happenings of the East Aurora region. They came back with some fascinating pictures and wonderful stories. This is Our Town, East Aurora. Broadcast of Our Town East Aurora is made possible by the generous support of Aurora Audiology and Speech Associates Incorporated, proudly helping people here for over 19 years in the South Towns. And by the Bank of Holland. The Bank of Holland is proud to be a member of the East Aurora community and is committed to giving the residents the personal service they deserve. Bank of Holland, a better way to bank. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. And by the members of WNED. Thank you. My name is uh, Mark Anthony, and I wanted very much to film uh, the Roycroft campus. The Roycroft campus comprises about a dozen buildings on a number of acres and uh, for many years was a, um, on the National uh, Register of Historic Places. It now has the highest status, a uh, National Historic Landmark, which is appropriate because that's what, what it really is. It's a special place for East Aurorans, but it is really a National American treasure. You have to go back just briefly to uh, the beginnings of the arts and craft movement which um, for our purposes began, let's say, in the uh, late 1800s by William Morris. Albert Hubbard decided to actually travel to England in um, 1894 and toured Morris's Arts and Crafts Complex. It was that tour that really further convinced Albert Hubbard to uh, create a similar environment in East Aurora. The name was chosen by Albert Hubbard, Roy Croft, meaning King's Craft. And um, his the germination was the beginning of his uh, print shop a year after his uh, trip to England. A tour of the present day uh, campus. The first building you would notice is the old chapel. That houses the town hall and that houses the uh, Aurora Historical Society. After that building, the next building you would notice is the uh, old uh, print shop building. This is the largest building on the campus and it has a half timbered uh, medieval uh, uh, look to it and it also has a uh, large uh, square of crenellated tower. Right adjacent to the print shop is the very charming Roycroft gift shop. The jewel of the Roycroft uh, campus itself is, of course, the inn. The inn was built um, in uh, between 1903 and 1905. And it was built because there was an ever-increasing um, number of uh, lecturers and uh, speakers and artists who started to flock to the Roycroft. Wouldn't that make a wonderful book? The Roycroft in itself had a uh, really an excellent and loving restoration done, completed in, 19, uh, in 1995 by the Wendt Foundation. The oldest part of the inn is the very large lounge room. The original dining room was there, complete with the carved uh, mottos um, that Albert Hubbard uh, had made. The peristyle is a kind of a long uh, porch that connects all the elements of the building and kind of unifies the facade. There's a very large salon and music room. And it's here in the salon and music room where you see the uh, Alex Fournier uh, paintings. And you see a lot of uh, details from different uh, places in the world. Of course, uh, painted into the murals is, uh, is the Roycroft campus itself. The Roycroft is, uh, is a state of mind in a way. It's not tied to this specific uh, building or campus. It's a historical place, but it's not a museum. 
It's a living, uh, vibrant place. It's certainly one of the symbols of, of East Aurora, certainly, but the Roycroft is really a, a, an American uh, treasure. My name is Michael Kelly, and I was assigned the uh, Fisher Price Toy Town Museum and the Explorer Moore Museum. Fisher Price dates back to uh, 1930. Herman Fisher was encouraged to come here by Irving Price. There were a lot of people already here that were skilled artisans, and it was considered that they'd be a good workforce for the toy company. They uh, started out building mostly wooden toys with, uh, you know, lamination decoration on them, and that was right along the lines of what the Roy Crofters were experienced doing. The Toy Town Museum is completely paid for by the uh, Toy Fest celebration that's held the end of every August. The parade is one of the largest in the area, and uh, it, it's been going on for the, the whole 18 years. The Toy Town Museum is really not affiliated with Fisher Price. It's a freestanding entity, free admission to go in. They have the permanent display of Fisher Price toys and they have uh, other toy companies from the area represented there. Let's go down here and look at the ponies. They also have exhibit space that's used by uh, the collectors and such. Explore More uh, actually grew out of the same grassroots sort of a movement that began the toy town. They have a philosophy of hands-on learning for children. There's an international area. There is a uh, Yes I Can exhibit area that uh, gives you an idea what it's like to be handicapped. There's a whole food area that the kids get to play to experience. Big Feet's area, which is for babies. A construction area where children are able to try hands-on to see what it's like to build a house. Local people are talented and skilled. So they're the ones that are actually called upon to build the exhibits and to uh, design the different um, spaces that are used by the museum. People are familiar with Fisher Price being in East Aurora and they appreciate the idea that this sort of a toy-oriented company located in a small town in the USA is a, you know, a positive thing. My name is Marie Westermeyer, and um, I've been living in East Aurora for 38 years. And um, I chose to shoot green spaces, which I think are beautiful. The Sinking Ponds is a natural preserve. They had to lay log bridges in the horse and buggy days in the mid-1800s uh, across the water. Many, many, many bridges did sink. They were able to discontinue that roadway and build a road uh, up and around in a different direction, and, which is now Girdle Road. Hamlin Park was donated by Mr. and Mrs. Hamlin. They wanted it used for recreation, and if it, if it wasn't used for recreation, it was going to revert back to their family. Um, so it has been well used. It's a beautiful park right in the heart of the village. Play area for the toddlers, which is um, donated by Fisher Price, and we've got the baseball diamond, the football field, the soccer field, the Aurora Players uh, building is there. And they have their big activities like Toy Fest and Fourth of July, and it's very well used. It's a beautiful park. Our whole village is surrounded by hilly terrain. The North Ridge is part of the golf course. The sunsets over there are beautiful. There's a little double falls um, on Mill Road that's very, very pretty. The West Falls Dam is Casanova Creek. There's a very tiny park right next to the West Falls Dam. Everybody who graduated from our high, local high school has fond memories of Fireman's Field. They have their annual alumni um, gatherings there every year. It was uh, designated Fireman's Field because um, it's in honor of our volunteer firefighters. There's a lot of people in East Aurora that might not know about the new um, park. It's projected to be quite nice. It will be named Major Park after Ken Major, who donated 40 of the acres. 
We have quite a group of people here that want to preserve East Aurora and the history of East Aurora. They don't want a lot of development. In some ways, I find that sad, but in other ways, um, I'm so happy that we have the green space that we do, and I would hate to see it usurped for anything else. Hi, I'm Greg Sumatowitz. I'm a long-term resident of East Aurora, and I chose the Farmer's Market uh, to here in East Aurora as my film project. The Farmer's Market gets us back to the growers and the people who actually produce the food. It's a community gathering place. Um, so often we shop in supermarkets and we have no connection whatsoever uh, between the food that we're getting and who actually makes it. You appreciate what you find at the farmer's market a lot more. Um, today, if you go to a supermarket, you can get strawberries flown in from who knows what country year round. But they're bred and grown not for flavor or nutritional value. They're, they're bred so that they can be mechanically harvested and transported long distances without damage. So with a farmer's market, they can actually wait until they're actually um, ripe before picking them, bring them to market that day, and you appreciate it because it will, you know it's only going to be available for a few months. The farmer's market is open uh, from 7 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon on Saturdays between April and November. It's down on Gray Street uh, at the, uh, the Aurora uh, shopping center on the front section of the center. It's a very uh, a valuable resource. Yes, you're there because the vendors are there. You're looking for uh, something, maybe a treat, maybe something for dinner. But it's, it's more of a gathering place. And uh, you run into people you know, familiar faces around town. Um, it's a very comfortable feeling. My name is Mary Ann Myers, and I am co-curator at the Albert Hubbard Roycroft Museum, and that was my topic. The whole house is a Roycroft artifact built by the Roycroft carpenters for a Roycrofter by the name of George Scheidemantel, who was a leather worker at the Roycroft. George's workroom is quite significant because he supported himself and his wife for the rest of his life doing leather work, even after Roycroft closed in 1938. So George always maintained a workroom in the house, one of the bedrooms, as his workshop. When Mrs. Scheidemantel was 100 years old, she decided that she needed to go into a nursing home, and so there was an arrangement made with the Aurora Historical Society where they would pay her way at the nursing home if she would turn her house over to them. So she was 100 years old. I'm sure they thought they were getting a wonderful deal, but she went on to live to be almost 106. People come from all over the world to visit us and yet local people don't see it. You know, it's kind of like the whole idea of Niagara Falls. You're, it's here, you don't go to see it because it's in your backyard. But people from out of town appreciate it so much. Once you kind of get into the Albert Hubbard and the Roycroft story, all the original leather, furniture, art glass, um, metalwork, all the things that the Roycrofters did, and it's the original thing, it's the real thing. So that's the special part about our museum. We have beautifully maintained gardens that are period plantings that relate to the 1910 period of the house. I think, you know, the Hubbard story, the Roycroft story, you know, the Fisher Price part of it, the, the Knox farms, the Jewett farms, the early horse farms, those are the things that, that really are East Aurora's identity. I don't think the story of East Aurora can be told without telling the, the Albert Hubbard and the Roycroft story, and I'm just, I've been involved in it for about 10 years now, and I get more enthused every year. My name is Linda Ramsey, and I'm the coordinator of services at Fish of East Aurora. And my contribution focuses on the humanitarian side of East Aurora. Fish is an interdenominational organization for those who seek to express their faith through loving acts of kindness for other people. Our food pantry is unique because of our volunteers and the quantity that is donated to us. Families are able to come in and pick what they would like. We also provide emergency needs, toys at Christmas, uh, referrals for public assistance, food stamps, Medicaid. We also have volunteers that work the clothing distribution room. We are given an abundance of donations of household items and clothing. 
Lothlorien Therapeutic Riding Center is on Ryder Road in East Aurora, and they provide therapeutic riding for individuals with mental, uh, physical, and learning disabilities in Western New York. They have about 200 volunteers. There's this wonderful instructor and the riders on the horses that take them around the ring a number of times. They have a freedom from their disability when they're on the horse. And the focus is more on their ability, not their disability. And it's, it's wonderful to see the smiles on the kids' faces. Portable Meals is very neat. It is also an all-volunteer program sponsored by the Presbyterian Church here in East Aurora. Volunteers pick up a hot meal in an insulated container from the nursing home in East Aurora and deliver it to the client's home. Aurora Adult Day Services is a program uh, designed really to enhance the quality of life of socially isolated adults uh, who reside within our community. What's provided are social and recreational activities, professional supervision in a warm, caring atmosphere, peer interaction and support, and just assistance with daily living. I think volunteering is, is very vital to a small community because we don't always have the resources for large funded agencies and organizations and the salaries to, to pay those people and volunteers are really a great asset to this community. My name is Melissa Schreiber and my topic was Artisans and Craftsmen of East Aurora. The Big Tree Gallery is actually one guy doing major pieces of furniture. His pieces are just so unique. But they're handmade, you can see that. Redfish is a renovated house. There's like rooms and rooms and rooms of studios. And, it's, and I thought, wow, for an artist, this must be a great place to come. It's unique in, in that they had art classes for children, art classes for adults. This little house has so much in there. I had gone by there so many times thinking, I should really go in there, I should really go. But when you go in there, it's like um, a community within a community. Okay, welcome. This is the Schoolhouse Gallery. Uh, this building was built in 1850. Everything in the Schoolhouse Gallery had that Roycroft symbol on it. Um, so you knew it was done by a master craftsman or master artist. I do uh, complete designs for people around the country. I see it in full color in the environment that it's going to be in. And what I need to do is I need to transfer that to the client so they can understand uh, exactly what I'm trying to do for them. At the time that I was there, they were working on a lectern for the Roycroft. I went and shot Tom Bojanowski at his home, which is a barn. He's the epitome of, of being a Roycroft artist. He is the man who makes the trash receptacles that are seen all over, and he thought of that idea. With great sayings from everyone from Abraham Lincoln, Albert, Albert Hubbard, of course, and uh, Benjamin Franklin. The Roycrofters began with Albert Hubbard in 1895, his goal was to be a, a, a publisher and a printer. Hi, Eric Zimmerman from Visual Impact Signs. I see his signs all over Western New York. He just does so many, and he's an artist in a sense because he designs it on the computer. And then he has a computer that makes it for him. He's a craftsman in my eyes. The arts and crafts movement, I think, shaped this town. It goes way back. It, it's, it's huge in East Aurora. My name is Dorothy Clough, and uh, my topic is life in East Aurora. We were so fortunate in selling our house. I didn't want to. I wanted to drag my feet about it. I just wanted to celebrate the fact that that was such a good life. We really had a wonderful life. I just think it would be so great to have a party starting at what was my house 
and then parading over to the new house, which is just around the corner. When the saints come marching in, that was a good walking over number because while I was very tearful, hearing that music kind of kept me laughing as well as crying. While we have wonderful businesses and uh, parks and so many great things going for us here, homes, in the homes are families. If we don't have a good family structure and we don't help each other with that, it does take more than a mother to raise a child, it takes more than a family, it takes a village. I just thought it was important to bang the drum a little bit for Easter Rock. My name is Mary Lynn A.C. Keelick, and I chose to shoot Vidler's Five and Dime for my project in our town. Vidler's is located on, uh, the, in the business district on Main Street in East Aurora and uh, kind of in the center of all of the business district. Before I moved here 12 years ago, I used to come out here on weekends every once in a while with my now husband and one of the first places he took me to was Vidler's. He said, you have to go in this store. When you first walk in, they have the candy counter. Sandy, the horse that you can ride, the popcorn machine. Um, they have costume jewelry, stuffed animals, um, household goods. They have candles. They have gifts. Uh, really, you'd be hard pressed to not find what you're looking for, for the most part. Mr. Vidler started the store, and it was called the Fair when it opened in 1930. Um, started it based around buying thread. They had to drive into Buffalo if they needed any. So that's how he built the store, was around that idea, giving people what they needed right in their own community. Walking on those old wooden floors, you just wonder about the hundreds of thousands of feet that have walked on those same floors since 1930, and the the children that get the same excitement when they walk on those floors and look around. I think Fiddlers is important to East Aurora because they're not just there as a business. They're there as part of the community. They've given to a lot of community projects in the, uh, over the years. They just are a part of the fabric of the community. Hi, I'm Becky Popiel, and my topic was the Aurora Players here in East Aurora. I think it's a wonderful family organization. We provide the town with a level of entertainment you're not going to find equaled around here for the basic ticket price. There are a lot of uh, people in the town that are Aurora Players. Everywhere I go around town, I see somebody else that's a member of Aurora Players. There must be in the hundreds, and there's people who come and go. Our theater has been continuously running with three shows a year for over 70 years. Right now, we are doing The Wizard of Oz. We have costumes, you won't believe. We got a lot of people in this cast. This is one of our biggest casts ever. We have all the kids from the community as munchkins. Their parents have brought them into the theater, and they, they discover their friends are already involved in the theater, and it's just so much fun for them. They can't avoid having fun. We invite anybody and everybody. We put our audition notices in all the local papers, including the Buffalo News. Come and try out for a show. If you don't want to be on stage, come to the tryouts, put your name in to work as a stage manager, a producer, a prop person, anything behind the scenes. We need people. The Roycroft Pavilion, 1903, by Albert Hubbard, um, it was an open air pavilion. We had so much support from the community and so much money rolling in that we could enclose the theater. We had our first musical in our indoor theater in 1956. I think that the um, Aurora players with the Roycroft Pavilion for the community of East Aurora provides um, a level of social entertainment that can't be equaled. Um, I think we draw in actors that you could see on a Broadway stage. The, the ability of these actors, their singing voices, you're moved during these performances. 
I think it offers the families and children of the area um, alternate activities, hobbies to do, and we offer the laughter and entertainment that goes on in, in, when you're involved with the Aurora players. You, you can't equal it anywhere. I am Mason Winfield. And I'm Mike Myler. And we have chosen the topic of the sacred Roycroft. There are signs, physical signs in architecture, imagery, art, of an interest in ancient mysticism. The mystical Roycroft. Uh, I thought it'd be a neat subject to because I'm kind of into that stuff. Probably the best example is the flat-topped pyramid of the Ruskin Room Tower, a copy of the Great Pyramid in Egypt. Windows, gables, coming out of three of its sides. For some reason, the west side is left a bare roof with no gable coming out of it. The west is stereotypically the direction of death. It might mean that they're not opening themselves to any influences but life, but because the building faces west, it might mean that the building is already open in that direction. The Roycroft mark is an old one, about as old as any human symbol can get. It was found inside the Great Pyramid several times. The red face on the chapel is a generic symbol of mysticism. It's probably related to alchemy and its imagery of a lion and a sun being uh, symbols of godhood. The statue of Michelangelo at Roycroft might be more significant because of its name. The Archangel Michael is one of God's high angels and tends to be associated with high sacred sites. Major temples, major cathedrals, the pyramids in Egypt, every one of them is sacred. It should be a sign that the Roycroft community also considered itself a sacred site. A great many of its members were spiritualists, Christian scientists, theosophists, Rosicrucians. The arts and crafts movement was a very mystical movement. It seems to have been something that, that's been forgotten and it needed to be rediscovered. My name is Dodie Underwood and my topic is East Aurora Artists in History 1900 to 1999. Eleanor Douglas came as a potter in the Roycroft. Almost all her paintings were of the out of doors and very woodsy. The president of Fisher Price was Irving Price, and he commissioned North to build the Aurora Theater. But there was a stipulation. He had to make room for his wife's murals in the lobby of the Aurora Theater. Hugh Laidman was a, just a marvelous person. His work is in Smithsonian as well as other galleries. He was one of America's better 20th century impressionistic painters. We had in East Aurora a very feisty, marvelous man by the name of Robert North who was a painter, yes, but first an architect, and he designed St. Matthias Church. And housed inside St. Matthias is a beautiful stained glass window that Rix Jennings did. My mother was Evelyn Notman Underwood, a very gifted and talented painter. And she traveled widely and earned international honors and she worked in oil, watercolor, and mixed media, and she worked in all subjects. You'll inspire youth with the work of the past artists. It's an important link in the cultural history of East Aurora. My name is Lynn Camaro. I'm one of the curators at the Millard Fillmore House Museum, and that's why I chose that topic. It's very dear to my heart. It's a, a home that Fillmore lived in while he was living here in East Aurora. It's actually the only home left standing besides the White House that he lived in. All the other homes have been torn down. Uh, it's also the only home in the whole country built by a president. He built it uh, for his bride, Abigail, in 1825, 
and they were married in January of 1826 and moved in. When Fillmore uh, built this house, he was just starting his marriage, his law career, and his political career here in East Aurora. The Miller Fillmore House was originally located up on Main Street near where the movie theater is, right across the street from Viddler's. Everybody knows where Viddler's is. We have Mrs. Price from Fisher Price Toys to thank for having our wonderful home because she um, had it moved to its present location in 1930 to save it from being destroyed. And she used it as uh, an artist studio. She was quite a well-known portrait artist. So at the time of Mrs. Price's death, uh, the Historical Society purchased the property from the Prices and began restoration of the house. So it's been restored uh, to look as close as we could get it to the time of when Fillmore's lived there, which was 1826. And uh, it was a very simple cottage. Uh, as I mentioned, Millard built it himself, post and beam construction, and it's a very sturdy little place. So it's uh, very wonderful. It's a very uh, friendly museum. It's not the kind with uh, areas roped off and you can't touch anything and that kind of thing. We have in there the many pieces of furniture that were used in the White House. We have the bookcase that the Fillmore's used to start the first permanent library in the White House, as well as furniture from his later homes. I think it's very important to preserve local history. This is a very big thing that happened to a small town in the 1800s, you know, a president coming from here. I think it's also important because it draws a lot of tourists and people here to our community so that they can appreciate how special a place East Aurora is. My name is Natasha Peterson and I chose Knox Farm State Park. It was originally built for the Knoxes who really like breeding and raising horses so they had it established there and it just grew. It used to just be a farm but everything's a park now and they added some buildings. They actually have a lot of horse stables. They have goats and llamas. We got to see people feeding them, putting them away, grooming them. So it was really neat. They actually have a really nice barn cat too that will come, it'll follow you everywhere. They actually had a pumpkin garden and a sunflower garden. That was an apple trees. They had a whole bunch of apple trees. They have a visitor center, and it has a whole wall of pictures. It tells a lot about, like, the Knoxes. They have everything from, like, candy, homemade candy, to hats from their sheep. So they have a very wide variety there. Knox Farm State Park. I live really close to it, and it was it's a really interesting place to go. You can hike there, horseback ride. I think it's important to this area because it's quite historical and it shows a lot of animals. The animals are really nice and I enjoyed it a lot. I'm Pam Fisher. I'm Ed Fisher. And our topic was Hamlets of East Aurora. When people talk about East Aurora, all they think about is the Roy Croft, Fisher Price. They don't think about everything else that's in the town of Aurora with all the hamlets in it. The people in those areas love where they live. And several of the families that were original to that area are still here. The Reading family was one of the original families that moved to West Falls. And they had a stock farm. It was one of the largest stock farms in the area. There's a store uh, that was one of the original stores. It was called Potter's Store. It had all kinds of dry goods and feed for the local people. We also shot the West Falls Library. All the stones that they built that library with came from all the farms in the area. The dog bar used to be the West Falls Hotel. The lady that owned it liked dogs so much she raised them and that was her tribute. She named it the dog bar. Each of their rooms there is named after one of the hamlets of the town. Pictures. Um, pictures, um, the history of that hamlet is all in that room on the walls. The Griffin family came from Canada, down from Canada, during the War of 1812. They bought the land with the grist mill and the sawmill and everything. That then was called Griffinshire and then later became Griffin's Mills. The cemetery we went out and shot because of all the history there. There's soldiers there from the Civil War, 
War of uh, 1812 and the Revolutionary War. We n live near West Falls and Griffin Mills, so we wanted to talk about those areas. 20 years we've been here. We just love the area. My name is Joe Cassidy. Uh, I've lived in East Aurora for almost three years now. The topic I picked is, uh, is Hawk Creek uh, Wildlife Rehabilitation Center. Uh, it's located uh, just outside of the village. It's something that's pretty unique to the area. They go to schools, uh, they often uh, participate with festivals. They go to uh, the Galleria Mall uh, almost every Saturday. You'll find them there uh, with a couple animals. Some of the programs that they have are, uh, are pretty special. At one point, the, uh, the barn owls will, were almost extinct in this area. So they, I mean, they're pretty unique uh, in, in what, who they are and what they do, and uh, they have a real passion for, for what they do. The founder is uh, Loretta Jones, and uh, she actually started the, uh, started the center as a, uh, as a way to teach her own kids about uh, nature. I had two children that were just devastated that we couldn't help this poor injured raccoon. So, uh, so I think we're up to 15 permits later, 17 years later, we founded Hawk Creek Wildlife and apparently there was a tremendous need because we now do uh, rehab over 500 animals and we have uh, 2,500 programs, edu educational programs we present every year and we have people calling us. I probably have offers of 30 animals a week trying to place here. They also have a, uh, um, a lodge where they do some presentations and uh, we went in there uh, and they had, uh, they were showing some, of, showing the, uh, the kids some of the, uh, the birds and doing flyovers. Uh, the kids, uh, the birds were flying over their heads and they really liked that. Hawk Creek is, is uh, receives absolutely no uh, state or federal funding. It's, uh, they re rely entirely on donations. Uh, including donation of time. I think it shows uh, the uniqueness of uh, East Aurora. I truly believe that uh, getting the message out to the kids is, is very important and the way they're doing it is fantastic. I'm Lisa Hoffman. And I'm Mary Flickinger. And the subject for our talk is East Aurora Main Street. We chose Main Street because it is the heart of our community, and most people view it as that. Main Street provides a great centerpiece for our town in that some very central things are located on it. Our schools are located on Main Street, our town and village hall, and our library. It's a gathering place, and in order to have that, you have to have attractive facilities, interesting cultural things going on. You have to have nice shops, and you have to have restaurants. I think a lot of our shops have tried to um, promote a very upscale feel to them. It's great shopping. They are constantly getting exciting new things. It's, it's great for Main Street. We have so many great historical buildings that can be turned into great office and retail spaces, but they need the, the historic building itself needed to be preserved. A new developer came to town and he decided he, he was going to invest in businesses, but he was going to keep the buildings, and he restored an extraordinary amount of older buildings, just beautifully, all along that upper strip of commercial buildings. They have all been preserved. Uh, they're very old, mid-1800s, mid and the stores are down below, and on the second floor, we actually have people apartments, people living there, and we have offices up there. We've got a new structure uh, on the West End. He sort of followed the new urbanism laws, uh, which is putting your building up onto the sidewalk with your parking in the rear. Very important for the walkability uh, of, of a town. Without Main Street, there would be no East Aurora and no Aurora. We would be like any other town. We are unique because our Main Street is so vibrant and uh, is alive today. My name is John Sly, and my topic was three statues and a monument to a horse. It was the most beautiful horse in the world in the late 1800s. It was a prize horse for the Hamlin Farm. 
And many people came from miles around just to see him. They had as many as 30,000 visitors a year. So we've been a tourist town even back then. When the horse died, they built a mahogany casket and buried him on Willow Street. They have a little monument put up by the Historical Society telling about the horse. And the house also comes with a picture of the horse in the front hall. Now the other statues, uh, the, the first statue is Michelangelo. This was Albert Hubbard's favorite author. Now the statue was late in being arrived and Hubbard wasn't very patient. Well the artist sent him a statue of a turtle, a small turtle about that size, and said, fine art takes time. Well Hubbard got the joke. So when the statue arrived, they placed the turtle at the base of the statue. Unfortunately, the turtle disappeared about 50 years ago. Our class reunion for 1954 found an artist that would be willing to replace the turtle and deliver it for $3,000. And we said, well, I think that's a little more than what our class wants to spend. <laughs> so we actually located the turtle in a garden center. <laughs> we put a plaque on there saying it's been donated by the class in 1954 and restored this year. Now the plaque, we got that solid down. It can't move that. But the turtle, somebody can swipe that again. <laughs> the Hubbard statue was erected by a great friend of Albert Hubbard. And he has the statue looking towards the Michelangelo statue. The Michelangelo statue originally was on the Roycroft campus and faced east. Hubbard wrote a piece called He Faces East about Michelangelo. The third statue in our community is a statue of a child looking at water over at the Fisher Price headquarters. And that represents basically a high point of Fisher Price in the community. It was celebrating, I think, the 75th year. I picked three statues and a monument to a horse because it does represent high points of our community. Hamlin was the attraction that brought Hubbard this way. Hubbard was here and attracted artists and the others from Fisher Price. Irving Price, was the one that had the statues moved from the Roycroft campus and donate them to the high school. So it represents three high points in the history of our community. My name's Adam Francis. I've lived in town my whole life, which is 24 years. I grew up mostly out in the village, but I now live in town. And my topic was Casanova Creek. The creek is something that a lot of people in East Aurora might forget is there but it really runs through the heart of town. You can't drive through town without crossing the creek at least once. You can't walk anywhere without seeing a bridge that goes over the creek. My personal favorite part is probably Emory Park. I just like the fact that it's there. Uh, it's no place for kids to go and people to hike in, and you know, there's wildlife down there. You know, I've, I've seen deer down there, all sorts of different birds. Emory Park has a uh, a lot of old stonework that was done in the creek itself, you know, bridges over the creek and little eating shelters and stuff like that. And so a lot of those shots look almost Lord of the Rings-like with these, these deep plunging gorges, little waterfalls and old stonework. It's a park that everyone in East Aurora knows. We, you know, you go there for picnics, birthday parties, or just for, you know, general excursions. I mean, I learned how to drive there on the small roads. There's two branches of the creek, the east branch and the west branch, and they sort of go on the outskirts of town. It joins up East Aurora with all our neighbors, like West Falls and uh, Orchard Park. Back in the day, it must have been very important to link the towns together and to have a source of energy and uh, you know drinking water. So it doesn't surprise me that all these, all these towns have sprung up along the path of Casanova Creek. Because if you look at a map, I mean, every town in this area is along the creek in some way, especially the old parts of the town. It adds part of the look of this town. A lot of bridges, uh, a lot of, you know, running water, which is beautiful. It, it brings wildlife to the area. Every time you go over a bridge, you can look at these formations of rock that have been carved out through the stream over the years. Without it, we wouldn't have the same landscape this town has. It would be a different way of life if the creek wasn't there.
My name is Jim Suttle. Uh, my topics were actually I had two, the American Legion in East Aurora and the school system in East Aurora, primarily the high school. The United States of America and to the Republic. I've been a Legion member for a long time, a uh, Vietnam era veteran. Liberty and justice for all. We have things going on there, down there all the time. I mean, every day of the week there's something going on. The armed personnel carrier was from World War II. We've had it on the Legion for many, many, many years. And also there's a World War II tank that served in combat. Eddie McDonald, who is the head pilot for Mercy Flight, he flew those in Vietnam. And he was one of the guys that was uh, instrumental in getting the chopper for us. East Aurora maybe is not like a typical blue collar town maybe that you, know, you get a lot of veterans from, but uh, I just feel it's important to remember what they contributed to our freedom. I retired from the post office about a year ago looking for a little part-time job and I took this job at the high school as a teacher aide. It's a great system. We have uh, excellent teachers, excellent staff, uh, ranked one of the five top schools in uh, business first. It's like a little city of our own up here. We have so many activities, whether it be academic scholarship list. or all the sports activities. There's probably 65-70% of the kids are involved in some type of sport. I mean, it's amazing. But to me, I've raised three boys and uh, there's definitely a correlation between being out of trouble and being in sports. You're on a sports team, it seems like you're focused and you learn teamwork and responsibilities, respect. Our future is in, that, in the school system. Uh, you know, a lot of kids uh, love East Aurora. I mean, a lot of them won't admit it, but a lot of them end up coming back here after they see what's out in the, the other part of the world, you know? I am Graham Abbott. I've lived in East Aurora for pretty much all my life. Uh, I chose to do the topic of the um, life of the youth in East Aurora. I think there could be a few more things that they could do. Like, uh, there isn't a whole lot to do around East Aurora for the youth, but um, what there is, it's pretty, it's pretty good. There's enough to do to keep me out of trouble. A lot of the kids in our school are really interested in like photography and art. We have a really nice art program at our school. We have three art teachers, so I think um, the more teachers there are in per subject, I think the better rounded you are to a subject. Those are really good. A lot of my friends and I, we go to like Taste, the cafe on Main Street. Um, just go out to eat, walk around Main Street, and go to different shops. It's just a beautiful town. I mean, it's small enough that you know you know a lot of people. It's quieter. I think there's a better atmosphere to it. It's a little more nostalgic, but yeah, it's big enough that. You have space. But I don't think there's anything I would want to get rid of in this town. Just because I've grown up with it for my whole life that uh, I don't really want to change it. My name is Peter Mercurio. I've lived in the East Aurora area uh, since I was four years old, so 32 years. I really love the churches and the architecture and the religious background of East Aurora. And so I chose that as a topic. The churches in East Aurora really add uh, an architectural legacy to our town. I also focused mostly on the seminary, which is one of 30 seminaries in the country. Besides actually uh, ordaining new priests, educating and ordaining new priests, they also have a program to teach deacons uh, in the Catholic Church, as well as the Eucharistic ministers. Chapel is really, uh, really interesting architecture. There's three levels of uh, seating in kind of a horseshoe, so there's a, a nice elevated view of the whole, the whole chapel. And then two of the walls are just giant stained glass windows, one of the Virgin Mary, one of uh, Joseph. And it's, they're just huge, and it's really beautiful, especially when you get the sunlight streaming in through all the colors. The students I talk to spend a lot of time in prayer. They get to go out and, uh, and think and pray on, on what they're doing, and that kind of thing, so there's a lot of peaceful solitude available to them. The seminary is important to East Aurora because it really is a valuable resource. 
constantly involved in the community in uh, East Aurora and around Western New York, helping uh, AIDS-afflicted uh, families, different charities that need help. And I think it's, uh, it's really something that uh, people should know uh, how important it is, how much they're there for our, for our community. I'm Dan Brunson, and the topic that I chose to do was the East Aurora Penny Saver. Some people also subscribe to weekly newspapers in East Aurora. We have the Advertiser, which has been around forever, and we also have the East Aurora Bee. People who had something to sell would often use the mails to advertise uh, the, what they were selling. And, and merchants found that they could get together and uh, save some money on postage by combining their advertisements. So that's where the name Penny Saver came from. A person who wants to buy an ad can come to the sales office on Seneca Street. The information that is to be in that advertisement is composed with computer typesetting. They put them together on a piece of paper about exactly the size of one page. That page is then taken to a process camera. It's a giant camera, biggest camera I ever saw, uh, where, they, uh, where they lock the individual pages in a frame and then photograph the pages. They use the negative to create a lithographic plate. The plate is then taken to a printing press and the press is used to produce the paper. But the really exciting part of the trip was when I went to the production facility. You walk in and it's very noisy. The first thing you notice is lots of sound and lots of noise. And there are giant rolls of paper spinning around at one end, unreeling into the press. They go up and down through these various presses, and all the pages are printed at once. The papers coming out of the press were stacked and moved and sorted. Then they're uh, loaded onto a truck with penny saver written on the side of it uh, and trucked back to a warehouse here in East Aurora where the individual carriers come to take them to deliver them to people's homes. Being an old school teacher, I, I couldn't resist giving a lesson. So what my story is, is a little bit of a lesson on how a paper is made and produced and distributed. My name is Libby Weberg, and I picked walking and biking and skating and skateboarding in East Aurora. Actually, the reason we moved here was when we drove through this community, we saw children out riding their bikes, families out walking dogs. Um, it seemed to be a community where you could get by without a car. Being able to walk and bike in East Aurora is a big part of what village life is. I've noticed with, with children that are out walking and biking that they tend to then want to play outside more and just do things outside. There are people that walk to the farmer's market. I bike there with, with two bags on the back of my bike and put the vegetables and fruits in and it's just a nice village um, scene to have people outside interacting with the, the farmers and the people that have grown the food. Main Street is, is an interesting place. It's very nice for pedestrians. Main Street has some problems as well. When down at the circle, there's a lot of drive-through type places that mean more cars, more traffic. One of the greatest threats to children walking is, is other parents that are driving their children to school because that just causes more congestion. What you get when you have people out of a car is you get just many more interactions between people. We just like living here because of the friendliness that you get. I just feel that it is a big part of the flavor of East Aurora. My name is Wilson Curry, and our family moved here to East Aurora in the winter of 1955, and I've lived in and around East Aurora ever since then. And I chose for my topic what I felt was indicative to any community would be the people of that community. What I chose to ask them was, what makes East Aurora special or unique in their opinion? And we got great answers. I think East Aurora is the best place in the whole world to live. It's so quaint and charming. It just has its an essence all its own. The people, they're friendly. It's the artistic community that is built up here around the arts and crafts movement. Because of the Rory crowd. Huh. <laughs> and because of such a great football team. 
everything. I love it. I've lived here for 56 years. What can I say? A small town village setting. Yeah, the restaurants are great. Everything is fine. Beautiful. The smallness of it. I like the little town like this and the old houses. Well, I love the old-fashioned old town. What do you think makes East Aurora special? I, <laughs> I just pulled in five minutes ago. <laughs> it seems very nice. It's not like going to a suburb where every single suburb is the same. Or a mall. Yeah. Oh, I don't go to malls. There's a lot of unique shops, a lot of nice restaurants. A lot of um, places now are, are so big, so cosmopolitan, or so much of a suburb that you know, you drive out of your driveway, you don't go down a few houses, and then you're just dealing with strangers all the time. And in East Aurora, it's not like that. The sidewalks, the theater. The village. It's the cutest village. I moved away, and I had to come back to it. Oh, Main Street. We have an alive Main Street. You can walk down Main Street and see at least a half a dozen people that you know. Great restaurants, great shopping. How many stores have we stopped in? I don't know. About we, five. <laughs> We've we took shopping. a long hike down to the uh, bread place. Montana. Montana bread. Wonderful bread. Central Diner. Central Diner. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can see. It's fun to like shop on Main Street and everything. Love the shops. The shops are just great. Fiddlers. Fiddlers is nice. Fiddlers. Fiddlers. I like it all. I think I like fiddlers. Well, if you got almost everything that a person wants. Just a beautiful community, you know, with the Roycrofts in here, and we have the Farmer's Market. Come to Farmer's Market. Farmer's Market. The Farmer's Market and, and the fact that they close off the street at Christmas time when we all sing Christmas carols. It's a lovely place to raise kids. Oh, it's just so small town, it's nice to walk in. Great sidewalks to walk everywhere. It's a nice place to raise a family. You can walk everywhere. You don't need to hop in your car to to, to get around. I'm shopped here for years and I just like it. It's the people. That's what makes East Aurora unique. Everybody wears um, jeans, skirts, and button-down blue collars like mine. And the out-of-town tourists, lime green jackets, hot pink, you can tell. I used to live in New York City, but boy, I'm telling you out here, the whole place is like a vacation. Well, it's just plain nice and it always was. We also asked sort of a controversial question is, if there was one thing you could change about East Aurora, what would that be? And we got some amazing answers there. Uh, I don't think it changed anything. It's pretty unique the way it is. Oh, I wouldn't change a thing. Nothing? Uh, not much. I wouldn't change much. It's kind of a nice community. I don't think there's anything I want to change. Actually, I don't think I would change anything. I would like to see a lot more cooperation in the community. Take out the McDonald's? <laughs> The traffic. Well, the traffic on Main Street is very, very heavy all the time. We need more parking. I don't think I'd change it, other than the traffic noise that you're having difficulty with right now. That's a double-edged sword because the traffic brings the people that make this place special, so. I think I'd like a little bit more diversity in the people that we have out here. If there was one thing you could change, what would it be? Nothing. No. I don't know. No. I'm not sure I would want to change anything. I'd hate to see anything change in this stuff. I wouldn't want to see it modernized at all. I would just like to see everything kept pretty much the way it is now. If there's one thing you could change about East Aurora, what would it be? I wouldn't change a thing. Broadcast of Our Town East Aurora is made possible by the generous support of Aurora Audiology and Speech Associates Incorporated proudly helping people here for over 19 years in the South Towns. And by the Bank of Holland. The Bank of Holland is proud to be a member of the East Aurora community and is committed to giving the residents the personal service they deserve. Bank of Holland, a better way to bank. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. And by the members of WNED. Thank you.